Well, good day. I'm pleasantly surprised to see that uh, we actually have people here left at the end of the day. So at Pacific, American Pacific Borate and Lithium, we have the unashamed uh, goal to become a globally significant producer of borates. And certainly over the next six months, we're going to prove that by working hard on our permits. The last two remaining operational permits that we have, we're going to work hard on, on sorting our, our engineering as well as our financing our financing options, and then finally building out the team so that we can properly execute. So with regard to our projects, our, our flagship project is our Fort Katy project. And basically in developing our Fort Katy project, it's in the beautiful Mojave Desert of California. Uh, we eight sixty million million has been spent on the project, and so we're able to move this forward very smartly. In December, we completed a DFS, and that DFS had wonderful financial metrics, but certainly we came back and looked at the project early in the year and reworked it such that we had a, a starter project. That starter project has a capex of $37 million. The beauty thing about the, the starter project is even though the, the EBITDA associated with the project, the starter project pays for itself in two years, it is a pathway towards over $340 million worth of EBITDA at full production. We have byproduct credits associated with SOP, with gypsum, and uh, potentially lithium as well. In addition to the Fort Katy project, we also have an exploration target in Nevada, and that's our salt wells project. Of most interest here, you can see that we have about 250 million shares associated with, or fully diluted associated with the company. So the question we always get asked is what are borates and why borates themselves? We find the borate market to be very exciting. So certainly if you look at the lithium market and then you look at the borate market, there are a lot of parallels associated with that. Glass, certainly the glass uh, in the building here, the glass on the front of your gorilla, the gorilla glass on the front of your smartphone is, has borates in it. Uh, there are borates associated with ceramics. There are borates associated with, de with detergents. Electric vehicles, electric, ve electric vehicles, the permanent magnets associated with those have borates in them. Uh, wind turbines and certainly probably the third largest use of, of borates is that of the fertilizer space. So one of the other reasons you've not heard about borates before is the borate market is a duopoly. So that duopoly is composed largely of eddy Eddy, which is the Turkish-owned enterprise, and they have about 55% of the market, and that market's about 4 million tons boric acid equivalent. And then, of course, Rio Tinto, or U.S. Borax in, in Boron, California, has about 20 to 25%. If you look at the bottom right slide there, you see that over the last six years, Rio Tinto has not increased production across their, their boric acid. We think that indicates that most of the the expansion capability does in fact lie with the Turks. So the, one of the other reasons you've probably not heard a lot about borates is borates only occur a few places in the world. You have to have volcanism, you have to have stranded inland seas, and it's very limited as to where this can be. So the borate minerals associated with, uh, the minerals associated with borate are borax, which is a sodium borate, and then you also have colmenite, which is mined by the Turks, and that is the, the mineralogy that we have at Fort Katy. So each and every day the Turks convert colmenite into boric acid shows that there's little technology risk associated with our project. So very well understood. You know, the first part of our project is 40,000 tons of SOP and then 6,000 tons of, of boric acid, and that was very deliberate. The 40,000 tons of SOP are produced across the Mannheim process. Mannheim process, there are probably 50 Mannheim furnaces across the world. And the Achilles heel to every Mannheim process is what do you do with the hydrochloric acid? Well, in addition to getting the revenues or garnering the revenues off of the SOP, we also take that HCL and inject 2 to 4 percent of that into the ore body, the colmenite ore body, bring it then to surface, refine that material, precipitate it, and create a high quality boric acid. In addition to that, the calcium, as I mentioned, it's a calcium mineralogy. So the calcium is uh, precipitated as, as by the addition of sulfuric acid, and it's precipitated as gypsum. The gypsum, again, goes into the high-value California agricultural market, and we produce the boric acid, regenerate hydrochloric acid, which again goes back into the recycle stream into the ore body. 
So very large uh, ore deposit here. Certainly when we drilled out the deposit, the resource itself was about 14 million tons boric acid equivalent. As part of our, our definitive feasibility study, we came back through and, and reconverted a portion of that to measured and indicated, about 50% measured and indicated, 50% inferred. In addition to that, RESPECT came in and peer-reviewed our feasibility study, and that feasibility study ended up with, call it 5 million tons worth of, of boric acid equivalent within the, within the reserve itself. That 5 million tons is sufficient for about the first 16 years of mining at full production rates. So one of the reasons that we're able to do what we're able to do is because, again, we have a very special place. The uh, injection of the hydrochloric acid into the ore body, there are no aquifers present. It's a very thick seam. It's bounded by faults along the sides so that there is no chance for escape. It's an alkali nature, so any acid that is left in the ore body is in time neutralized. We have produced high quality boric acid, 99.9% off the material in the, the bulk samples that were collected from the site. And again, the Mannheim process is well understood off the, off the shelf kit. So there's very low technical risk associated with the project. Of course, one of the things is the, the as we reworked that project, that starter project was about 37 million capex. And that 37 million, again, gets you 6,000 tons of boric acid, 40,000 tons of SOP. And then we move forward on that. You can see as well that the, the phase 1A project, the starter project itself, is a standalone project with an EBITDA of $27 million. That $27 million, in effect, pays for the project within the first two years of operation as a standalone project. Most importantly, it does show that there is a pathway towards that plus $340 million worth of EBITDA at full scale. And certainly when you start looking at, at projects, you know, our, our ambition is to move this towards North America once we're a producing asset. And when you start looking at assets within the United States, you know, fertilizer and chemical specialties, they have EBITDA ratios of 8 to 12 percent, so certainly that uh, 8 to 12 times, pardon me, EBITDA, so that 350 starts to look very interesting. Within the, as I mentioned previously, we're working on our permitting. We have two permits that, two major permits that are outstanding. One is with the state of California as an air quality permit. That air quality permit was previous in, previously in place with the operation, and then it was rescinded by the company. Uh, we're working to move that forward, expect that in the next couple of months. We also are working on an underground injection control permit, which is an EPA or a federal permit, and that seems to be moving forward smartly as well. Our anticipation is that we will have that permit, the last of those permits, by the end of the year, which will allow us to start construction towards the end of the year. Multiple options available to us for uh, moving the, for financing and moving the project forward. Uh, we think that we also have a focus on, on fertilizers. Certainly the SOP fits well into that, as well as borates. So if you look at borates as a micronutrient, the borate micronutrient is the second most applied by value micronutrient, and it's had a 9% compound and annual growth rate. Add to that, we have gypsum, and the gypsum is used as a soil amendment for the high sodic soils within California. We have two strategic agreements with the Chinese as well. So if you look at the 4 million tons of boric acid equivalent across the, the world, roughly half of that 2 million tons is Asia, with China being the largest portion of that. We have strategic agreements with Sinomac and Sinochem. Both of those are Fortune 500 global companies, larger than, U, than Rio Tinto and larger than BHP. If you look at our, our construction timeline, certainly, as I indicated, by the end of the year, our anticipation is to be in construction. Uh, we'll be advancing engineering and then in construction, a 12-month build cycle, and we should be in production by the end of next year, the beginning of the next. Value proposition, again, this kind of gives summarizes everything. Large multi-generational deposit, high price California markets, uh, first world geopolitical, this is a mining project, this is not an infrastructure project. We have access to railroads, we have access to gas, we have access to electricity and, uh, and port options as well. 
As I mentioned, we also have uh, our, for, our salt wells project, salt wells in Nevada. Previously had some uh, borate mining, so it's consistent with our, our stated goal of being a globally significant producer of borates. And I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. Any questions at all? Okay, no worries. Thank you very much, Michael. And uh, you can get more information from registration and book a meeting with them.